this is what I've done so far. Now, you know what? I wouldn't win any prizes for stampery here. So if you look, this is this is again to make you feel better. And uh, in my hurry, look, hardly I can see it. It's not perfect though. Look at this. I missed a bit of the leaf there. This is really just to let you say you don't have to worry about doing perfect stampery when you're painting paint fusion. It's there as a guide. So I've created a composition. I've stamped, started with the leaves and I've created kind of a, a kind of drop. I would strongly suggest you have a look at some pictures of fuchsia and see how they're growing. And it'll help you kind of construct a natural looking kind of branch if that's what you want to go for. Of course they look great any decorative way you want to use them as well. So it kind of curves. Then I've stamped just three flower heads on top of that. Now I'm going to start painting the leaves. Right, so colours I'm going to use. I'm going to use the um, antique white from the neutral set. Take some out and get some kitchen paper and then I'm going to take some of the forest green from the foliage set. Again, these are suggestions. You might find that you found fuchsia that's got different colour leaves. You've got plenty of leaves in your, in your um, foliage set to swap it around, change it, mix it up. Use a yellow instead of an um, antique white if you want. Now, and then a little bit of the garnet from set two, I believe. All right, the rose set or set two. So now you can see the, the leaves, the smaller leaves, then there's a larger and then there's a, the big leaf. So what you do is it's, I'm just gonna scoop and scoop again, blend the color in, work it into the brush as usual. You're blending it, you're pushing the colour into the brush and what you're doing is you're blending it on the brush so you don't have to blend it on the paper. That's really it. So that should be pretty good and then a touch of that red on the end should give it a little bit more of a realistic look. This is how I'm going to do it. Left to right on the right hand side of the leaf. So I'm going to place my brush. Now this is a small leaf but I'm still going to be able to manage it with the half inch flat brush. And I'm painting like little ripples, little waves, okay? So nice little scoopy little think waves. Turn it around and I'm going to just do the same thing again. Little, It's very similar to the holly, if you've painted the holly, but not as, as severe little ripples. And you get, you see that little red there? I think that's going to blend in lovely when I paint the flowers. So let's just do a few more and then I'm going to leave you and I'm going to carry on. Um, so that we can move to the flowers all you know once you've done one leaf the, the leaves are just a variation on a theme you'll you'll really get used to just these little tweaks and things that make them look a little bit more individual and different so can you see that was light pressure I haven't got too much paint on the brush but I've got enough to know that I don't I can make it without it dragging from the start of that leaf to the end and the more you do the more you'll get the feel for this and people who are on the internet and fusioneers out there and groups and things will tell you that that is indeed the case. Liking those colours, they'll look lovely with those flowers I'm going to paint because I'm going to use this red in the flower as well. Very designer. See? Always make sure that you capture the black incline or the grey incline. In this case it was dove grey again. Stays on. It could be. Um, any distress ink colour, light ink colour, ordinary dye based ink colour because it's just on card so you know it doesn't really need the clinging power of stays on on this but it, yeah, it's just something I use all the time so it was there and I'm painting over that flower but I don't mind because it's going to look more realistic when I paint that flower in again later if it's sitting on some leaves rather than just spaced out like you know nature would never have done so i'm going to leave that there okay so i just picked up that little line in the center and i'm going to continue you can see it's the same process i'm just going to continue with the larger leaves just a little bit more paint a little bit more pressure and then we'll come back right so i've continued as i promised with the leaves so you've got them all painted there okay hopefully you can see there and um they, they're, they're not finished, they're not joined up, but I'm going to do that last. Once I've got the flowers in, we can work out where they could be coming from, all right? Now, the flowers. You might notice as this one here looks a little bit overstamped, it's because it is. 
when I painted the leaf, I lost the detail at the top of that flower. So what I did was I just overstamped it. I used a light colour so you wouldn't see too much. And the way I could do that was because, can you see how close, how I've cut around my image? And I love that because of rocker blocks and not needing to put them on foam, you can cut really close to your stamped image. So registering it to over, over stamping, it's really, really pretty good. Okay, now colours. We're going to start with some white and um, obviously from the neutral set and I'm going to use some of one of my favourite colours, the violet, which is from set one or the sweet pea set. And I'm going to take some of that out thus and I'm going to double load the brush. Now the brush I'm using is a number six, sorry, and a half inch flat brush, I was distracted because one of the dogs appeared under the table and it's the evil one, Molly, the really evil Springer Spaniel. So I'm kind of painting and I've got one eye there at the same time. Okay, so look, I'm blending it in. I'm using that really dark colour because then it'll look like a really dark shadow in the ruffles. Um, I still want plenty of white, so I don't want it really too dark. So if you want to blend a little bit more, just no, walk your brush left or right and you'll get more of a blend of the colour, okay? So let's work it there. Now, turning it upside down, let's paint the ruffles in this flower first of all, okay? So what I'm going to do is just start and just place my brush down, place it right towards the top of um, where the, the, the top bit of the flower joins the bottom bit. And I'm really not going to worry about trying to match up exactly where my petals were. I'm just going to use, again, those as a guide. Oh, I don't know if you saw that on camera, but I blame Molly. I switched my brush around on my mixing, on my uh, palette, and I put the white into the violet and the violet into the white. So, like I say, if you get distracted, and believe me, if you're going to get distracted, Molly will do it. That's what can happen. Just clean it, wipe it, start again. And then I can do another one maybe there. See, there's no major hard and fast rules to this. Um, really a good thing to think of when you're doing this. And then let's do another one over there. Can you see how we've got now a really pretty ruffly centre? I'm not worried that I've come over onto these bits because those can cover later. Um, okay, let's do the other one quickly. I might just continue to do this and then come back to you so I can do the next bit, depending on how much time I've got. Right, can you see it? There you go. There's two of the Roughly bits done. Now the next bit I'm going to do is the bottom. Always work at the bottom of your flowers first. So you can see we've got a closed bud there. So this is really easy. All I'm going to do is take some of that violet and I'm literally just going to paint over the whole thing. You can add a little bit of water if you need just to make it easier to paint. Just follow the shape. This is the number six round brush and I'm literally just blanking it in. Okay. And I'm painting upside down here, we appreciate that. And again, I've lost a little bit of that shape, but I pretty much I can see it's going to go to there and to there. And that I'm going to paint in with another colour shortly. So that's that's all I need there. Now, again, this is just a suggested colour combination. You don't have to stick with this, but it, it looks nice, it's pretty, it works. So we're going to come in with more of a pinky colour now. So now we've got the bottoms painted, we're going to paint the top bits of these flowers and I'm going to use the number 6 round brush. I've popped some um, bright pink on my craft mat and I've popped some garnet, garnet on there. And I'm just mixing in the bright pink first of all into my brush and then I'm going to pick a little bit of garnet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little dot at the top where it's hanging and then I'm going to paint a thicker line just like that to represent the the top of the flower so and if you can see a little bit of your green color through don't worry we can cover that up a bit later but you can see we've got the top of the flower so let's do that again just a little dot at the top and then 
a little bit more pressure and a longer line down there and we can join those up. So that's the first, the top bit. In fact, let's do that one more time on this little one here because it's going to be the same kind of thing. Little dot and then the line like that just to make it a little bit like a bulbous kind of shape there. Right, now those petals. Let's add some more of this pink. Pick up the pink, that same bright pink. Load it into the brush. And then pick up the garnet. And you can see there's a petal behind this one in front. So let's paint that first of all. Heavy pressure, press down, then lift up. Now, I found that I've had to tidy this up a little bit. Okay. Can you see that? I'm, I mean, I'm getting all kinds of signals from um, Cecil B here. So hopefully, can you see that I've just painted? All right, let's try that again. Now I'm, I am moving the thing around because I'm having to try and, you know, get in there so that I can paint it. So if you hear a shout, it's Russell telling me it needs to be moved. Okay, so let's try it again. down, light pressure and then a little flick. Now can you see it's gone a little bit messy at the edge of that brush stroke. Now if this was pure, purest um, folk painting, I'd have to, I'd be doing time now because that's not as tidy as your folk painter would maybe necessarily um, expect it to be. But it ain't, it's paint fusion so we can cheat. Ha ha ha, and we will. It's all about the end result. So can you see how we've got that pretty shape there? Right, and by cheating, this is what I'm going to do to tidy that up. I'm going to take the small brush, the um, number three round brush, I'm just going to tidy it up, and then I'm going to just go ahead and just paint and just tidy up the edge of that those little brush marks there. See? And if you use, you see, the darker colour towards the bottom of the brush stroke actually gives it a little bit of shading and dimension. I have to say, this is just crazy painting with these lights. It's dry and it paints so quickly. It'll be easier for you. You, you won't have this as much hassle here. Okay, so you can see how that flower is really coming on there. And then, you can even, if you want to be fancier with it, add a little bit of water down white and just add a little bit of a highlight like this to the top of your brush strokes. Can you just see there? Just water down white. Just a touch and then it looks like you've got a nice shinier little lip thing. Oops. Right, I'm going to finish this one off because I'm conscious time might be running out and then I'm going to move on to this bud and then I'm going to show you the finished thing. To finish that off, use the same round brush and just go ahead very lightly, water down paint, thin it down. Oops. Then it down. If you do that and you go off, off course, go off course, then paint another one in. Light, light brush strokes here. And if you want to add a little few more, go ahead. And then for the ends, it's just uh, two little dots. And there you've got your painted flower. Okay, I'm going to continue with these others and then I'm going to show you the um, how to join them all up. 